look at this concert kaboomus and three pyrotechnic performers so concert kaboomus has four power and boom 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 we don't even have to get the swing in that went kaboom Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse, welcome back to another episode of Mana Man, and today we've got a juicer for you. Before we dig into the deck, make sure to leave a like on the video. The button looks just like this, and it does help out the channel tremendously. I greatly appreciate it. Feel free to join us in the Discord down below in the pinned comment, and let's dive right into Disguise Burn. That is right, we are running a new alchemy set here. There are new, Let's go ahead and start off with the Construction Arsonist. So, whenever a Construction Arsonist enters a battlefield, you may choose instant or sorcery in your hand. If you do, it perpetually incorporates, now this is alchemy, verbiage so basically what that means is um whatever mana cost it is it's not um it is mandatory you don't get to choose so what you do is you gain one red gain when this when you cast the spell it deals two damage to each opponent so basically whenever you play this down you're gonna make a shock or you know melt through or whatever you're gonna make these things cost two but it deals four damage instead of two so it's a little bit better than a lightning bolt after you play it and the next part whenever you cast a multicolored spell construction arsonist gets plus one plus one for each of that spell's colors now the only way we really make use of this is we do have perilous iteration and the dark age scion but still i think that's enough so we do like putting this down and then you also it's just a really good card you know i mean making your shocks beefed up lightning bolts you know rager's fire ban melt through etc etc is really nice now what you notice about this it has perpetual so when you get to play this if you have jar soul the dark age scion when you get to play this from the graveyard you can it actually it keeps it because it's perpetual so the shock is going to deal four damage again if you do get into the jar soul dark age scion maybe this could go up to two i think the only reason why i'm not is because i am planning to kind of test out the concert kaboomus this is a brand new card from alchemy um, whenever it enters the battlefield or is turned phase up, it deals X damage to target opponent, where X is the number of non-creature spells you've cast since the beginning of your last turn. So it is a little bit of a catch-22. You gotta kind of think, you know, like, there are a lot of times I'm playing this, and I'm like, oh god, how many did I spell? Usually it does tell you, but sometimes it gets a little wonky, but I actually like this card a lot. It does have four power, and it's trample. It has trample, and you disguise it for one, which is obviously nice with our pyrotechnic performer, fugitive of codebreaker, but... Like I said, with the Kaboomus, you need non-creature spells. So overall, I think we got the perfect blend of creatures and non-creatures because you do need both of them because obviously all of our uh, little stuff here is like damage. I am running Tectonic Hazard. Tectonic Hazard, deal one damage to each opponent. This card absolutely cripples Boros Convoke and all those like little weenies. And also, um, it doesn't cripple as bad, but it does hurt even Toxic decks to a lesser extent. But overall, this is the last card that even does any sort of damage to your opponent's face. So even if you only deal one damage to your opponent's face, you can, uh, you know, increase it with Fiery Inscription. And it does kind of help out versus, like, uh, Control, even if it's a little underwhelming. But again, there's no, uh, if I had another Shock type of thing here, I would run it. But um, we're just running this. And like I said, this is pretty much it. We're going to just go into Disguise. And hopefully we can just um, make use of these new Alchemy cards. And yeah, this is Burn. This is Burn. It is what it is. Gruel burn. Consider joining the channel. That would help me out monetarily as a content creator in my journey through all of this. And go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. And without further ado, let's get ready to vanquish some enemies. Low spark. Hello. All right. This is like a pretty juicy hand here. It does require a little bit of setup, but like I said, we do not care. Let's go up for the captivating crossroads. This is perfect, because it has to come in tapped. We don't have a one-drop anyway, so we're fine. Underground Mortuary. The Rick and Mortuary. Ooh, Haywire Might. You might have needed that Haywire Might. They don't know it. They may have needed that, especially if we do get into um, something else. But let's go ahead and drop our Pyrotechnic Performer. Do you like the Pyrotechnic Performer? We have got a lot of Disguise. A lot of Disguise, actually. We got a Codebreaker, Performer, and Kaboomus. We got all three of our uh disguise creatures in hand all right shock so do we want to get down the kaboomus or do we want to get down the performer um let's just swing in first looking pretty good the kaboomus is pretty good but only if you have yeah, screw it. this is our new card right maybe we want to go for the performer first let's just get down let's just get down the kaboomist this is our new card we're kind of like you know def testing it out sort of so whenever enters the battlefield turns face up and it's only one you get to do x damage where x is the number of non-creature spells so micro tyrant not too afraid of this this thing can get crazy but as of right now i'm not too worried about it um i actually am gonna go for the parasite iteration i also well maybe not i don't know 
maybe we're just being a little too cute. I would, I just wish I had another land drop here, but we don't. So I think we'll just go ahead and shock this thing while we can. And I'm actually not going to flip this up. I'm actually going to go for another performer and just swing in. I think that's pretty good. Like I said, um, with the Kaboomus, when we finally flip this thing, it's going to it's going to go Kaboom. Ooh, this thing can gain life. Sacrifice a land, you gain two life. That's actually not that bad. So Jarsal, the Dark Age Scion, I think at this point, we're just not really wanting to. Wait, hold on. Do we? Hold on, hold on. Can we win this one? How many did I cast? Just one. So this actually only deals one? Okay, hold on. Let's go for the Pyrotechnic Performer. So that will be three Pyrotechnic Performers, and then we can flip this. They may not even block this either. So let's do this. We've got three pyrotechnic performers. Hopefully they, no, you don't. Unfortunately, they know what's up. I'm still going to turn this face up, unfortunately. But look at this. Concert Kaboomus and three pyrotechnic performers. So Concert Kaboomus has four power. And boom, boom, boom. We don't even have to get the swing in. That went kaboom. Julio Balam? Is that Balam? How you doing? How you doing? All right, let's go ahead and keep this. We have all of our disguises right in here. We got the Pyrotechnic Performer, the Fugitive Codebreaker, and the new Concert Kaboomness. That is absolutely amazing. All right, let's see. Wow, so we actually are playing. That's crazy. I'm not even joking you. I was looking at my phone because I thought there was basically no way we were playing. Okay, I guess we're playing. Wow, okie dokie. I mean, I'm happy. I just wasn't expecting it. All right, I guess we'll go ahead and get down the force. Doesn't really matter here. I'm actually just going to play down the performer. I think the Codebreaker is a little bit better uh, later in the game. So, I'm okay, Julio. We are playing a game here. All right, Ranges Firebrand. Let's see what we want to do here. Let's just go ahead and get our Disguise down. So, let's get our Concert Kaboomus. And I'm just going to waste absolutely no time. Get that down. Pyrotechnic Performer goes in, and the show's on the road. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. So, um, definitely do not like the land there. I think I kind of want some sort of, like, bump spell. So, if I turn this up, Disguise, it deals X damage to X opponent, where X is the number of non-creatures used to cast since the beginning of your last turn. So, nothing really to play off of here. I think we're just going to go in for the Code Breaker instead. Yeah, this is fine. We'll go for the Code Breaker, and uh, we'll call out Red. And then fire ban your face. I don't really want to disguise right now. No, let's not do that. Swing in. Bang. 1220. We're looking pretty good here. I don't know exactly what we're playing against. I'd assume maybe like dinos or something. But I uh, it's going to... Next turn's going to get pretty nasty here. So Fugitive Codebreaker is going to be uh, Hammer Skull. Okay, so here we go. So Hammer Skull, we got the Melt Through. Let's do you for red. And this is the Alchemy version, obviously. So it never comes in untapped or, or later in the game. Uh, versus Standard. So, we don't get it untapped. So that's nice. Alright, I am actually going to... Maybe we should just melt through. Let's melt through the face. Yeah, I think we're just trying to go straight in here. So, turn face up. Bam. Discard your hand. Draw three cards. Of course, we don't have a hand, so that's also beautiful. Deal two to you. And now do we want to melt through? I think we do. Let's actually... Hold on, do we have lethal here? Um, this is the ring bearer. We can't deal... So, how much are we actually dealing here? I actually kind of forgot. I think it's two, right? Okay, it's two. So if I deal two, can't be blocked, melt through. No, I think we're not able to go for lethal just yet, right? So let's do this. We're the ring bear, so we can't get blocked. Next to blockers. Bang! Turn it up, baby! Oh, oh, what are we doing here? Hold on. Bang! Turn it up. Concert Kaboomus is going to go boom. And that's it. And that's it. Johnny, Johnny on the spot. How you doing here? All right, let's go ahead and keep this. Looks pretty good to me. Looks good enough, at least. So, hello, Johnny on the spot. All right, let's go ahead and get our, down our Copper Line Gorge. Of course, we're not wasting our burn spells on the face. We can do a lot better than that later in the game. All right, so let's see what you got here. Blue and a Spyglass Siren. This card's really good, man. Really good. Just a classic all-around card. I think Spyglass Siren will stand the test of time. So, I think I do like going for Ren's Resolve. I don't want to go for the Code Breaker. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The iteration you don't really want to play on turn two if you can't, if you don't have to. Crystal Grotto. Let's see what we're playing against. This could be like mono blue. Sometimes it's like uh sometimes I see like Simic. Sometimes it's every now and then you see like Esper artifact y kind of stuff, but. Alright, scry one. See what we're playing against. I think turn turn three looks pretty good with the shock. 
Swarm Bee is maintain as much mana efficiency as possible. We don't really mind the map token here. So Thopter Mechanic, this is looking like artifacts for sure. They're gonna want like um animate artifacts, Zoeta Glyph, that kind of thing. But I think we actually have a pretty good matchup versus them. Especially if they don't drop any huge art artifacts quickly. Case of the Fitch Falcon, we only have one. I think they're stuck on land, right? So were they on the play or the draw? I don't remember. Either way, let's not worry about that. Let's go ahead and drop you. And I think we actually are gonna go for the code breaker. The code breaker later in the game is really, really nice. But as of right now, I think we're just gonna use the shock that we have to play this turn or else we lose it. Get up for that prowess and just get them down to 17. That feels absolutely phenomenal. Alright, so. See if they actually are running removal. I mean, right now they just have like an awkward crystal grotto y thingy that actually can't give non colorless unless they have another source so removal seems fairly unlikely i think we're just gonna outspeed them so looking pretty good so far candy trail probably are they gonna miss another land drop is the question scry two they put two on top so they obviously like what they see and that's gonna leave that's gonna be really really slow and it feels good for me Okay, so I'm just thinking here. I think it's. I think we're just gonna go for fiery inscription and then just go for a, a ranger's firebrand. Let's just get to it. Nothing fancy here. Just good old classic play stuff, burn stuff, do damage. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and let's go for the ranger's firebrand, and we will get tempted. Sometimes the a lot of times the tempting of the ring stuff doesn't really matter a whole lot, but sometimes it does. So we'll get them down to 13. Get them down to nine if we can swing in here. I don't think they have uh, removal. Seems very unlikely. I guess they are holding up priority for something. Do they have... Oh, Unsummon. Wow. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go ahead and give a little angry donut here. I don't see a whole lot of... I don't see a whole lot of that. Obviously, Fading Hope is like a pretty good card, but it's not available in Alchemy. So we got our Concert Kaboomist. Um, What do we want to do here? Let's go for the Thram Portal. This is Alchemy, so the Thram Portal does come in untapped here, so... I think this is actually pretty decent. If we go for the, the Kaboomist here, we go for a Ranger's Firebrand. I think I will hit the, the Navigator. I don't really want them to have any of those Magpies, those 1-3s. Uh, let's not do that. So go ahead and hit them. And all right, here we go. It's not, I think we could do a little, what was that? That was, that was weird. But either way, Concert Kaboomist goes Kaboom for three. And now we got a 4-2 Trampler. I think there is like, you know, there's definitely ways that we can make the Kaboomist go kaboom for a lot louder but you know still a pretty nice card here all right so zero two eh, it is what it is not really i'm not really sweating that too much here but like i said there's definitely there's got to be some times where the kaboomist can kaboom for a lot louder than that but i still think overall it's pretty good here so let's go for the captivating crossroads you always want to wait for your land drop and let's go for the kaboomist and i think we might as well do it now yeah let's just go ahead and do it now auto pay and I think we, well, it was only like two, yeah, right? So, deal two, I think, you know, a lot of times the Pyrotechnic Performer is actually better. But the Kabuma still does pretty well, so. All right, let's see if you're invited to the concert. Because we're going kaboom, baby! Codebreaker obviously refuels our hand. I think we're looking pretty phenomenal here. I don't really see any world we can lose. They can go for the candy trail and get some more life here. But yeah, we've got five sorceries and instants for the code breaker. And we can flip this over for one. I mean, it looks pretty uh, phenomenal to me. Thopterus, okay. They were looking good. And the Kaboomus actually has trampled. Now, that is actually a pretty big um, point of uh, interest. So let's go for the code breaker here. And we're going to be able to just... We're, we're going to be breaking codes here. You're going to be able to get the uh, the Game Shark from your school library. If you, uh, for all you uh, people that remember that. Codebreaker. Draw three. Looking phenomenal. I think uh, we could go for the performer, but we don't have anything else to disguise yet. So, to flip over, rather. So, yeah, I think it is what it is. We're going for the Kaboomus. We have Tramp on the Kaboomus. Codebreaker's looking phenomenal. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and swing in. Maybe I should go for the iteration before I swung in, because we have Prowess on the Codebreaker. But I don't think it really matters that much. They were looking on auto another unsummon, so yeah, I mean, I can definitely see where you would like that in this deck, but yeah, like I said, um, maybe a little bit fishy there that we didn't go for the Perilous Iteration, but either way, let's see if we can get a big Kaboom card. With the Fiery Inscription, I don't, I think the Fiery Inscription is going to kill them before the um, we get to flip over our um, Concert Kaboomist. 
but the thought's still there. Unk, this is uh, pretty underwhelming for right now, so I think we're looking pretty good. Next turn, we should be able to just kind of blow them away. Another land, doesn't really matter. Let's go for the Perilous Iteration. Yeah, like I said, we, it doesn't even really matter here. Yeah, we, I mean, we have a, a plethora of options. We have an embarrassment of riches. Let's go ahead and flip this over. I don't know. It's a, oh, I only did one instead of two. I don't know. I'm just clicking buttons at this point. Double fire inscription, shock, etc., etc. It doesn't really matter. We actually have trample on the Kaboomus as well. It doesn't matter. We do, we, I, yeah, it doesn't matter. Good game. In deepest shadows. Well, let's go ahead and melee this. Try to get a little bit more land here. So we got the Perilous Iteration. We have double fire inscriptions. This is kind of an awkward state here. Because like, what do I actually get rid of? I think I'm actually going to get rid of the Iteration. The Iteration is usually used to grab the fire inscription. So yeah, this, this is fine. Let's go ahead and go for red. And we'll be fine. This is a sorcery, so we can't even go for it anyway. Swiss Spear. Okay, well that is going to be uh, pretty actually pretty good for us. Because we can just kind of pop off the Swiss Spear here. And we're going to do it before they go in for any sort of their prowess nonsense. I mean, that's looking pretty good. I think this is like close to op the optimal. Just dropping fire inscription on turn two. Or turn three, rather. Excuse me. Swiss Spear. Okie dokie. Not going to touch that unless they want to go for Monstrous Rage or something like that. So we can kind of get it before the prowess comes through. Yep, that's fine. Alrighty, well, let's do the thing. We got the fire inscription. Let's go ahead for fire inscription number one. We don't get to uh, tempt any of our creatures here, but um, I don't think we'll need to. I don't think we'll need to. We do get the ring. I mean, this, yeah, this deck's really good. Uh, not a whole lot of times where, like, the ring is really that relevant. But, oh, okay, all right. So, got Fire Inscription versus Fire Inscription. Unfortunately for them, they do not know that we are packed. Oh, baby! Oh, baby, it almost feels unfair. So let's go ahead and fire and script. I'm actually going to melt through right on the Swiss Spear here. Um, yeah, pretty good here. Double fire inscription, and we even got the triple. Triple rings, baby. They say there's only one ring. I don't know. We got three inscript. We're going to inscribe on three rings. I don't know if that's the, the real ring, but three fiery inscriptions, and things are going to get out of hand quickly. But honestly, like I said, we don't actually have the actual burn spells, so we can still lose a race here. So, gotta be a little bit careful. Performer. Um, this is actually... I would say this is, like, semi-awkward. I still want to get this down. Yeah, I still want to get this fire inscription down. This uh, performer is a little clunky in our hand right now. But, okay, we got three fire inscriptions. But, like I said, though, we're at 12 life. If we can, we can lose this. So, they have Questing Druid. We'll go down to 10. We can actually lose this because we have this, these fiery inscriptions. I mean, we need something to kind of play off of it. Because if not, they can just win with one if they actually can hit us. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is not good. See, we we need the Ren's Resolve. Oh, this is so bad. Swiss Spear, Rally. We, we're gonna, I think we're going to lose. I'm not joking you. I think we actually lose. We take two from Fire Inscription. We're going to take four here. We'd, uh, we're not going to lose this turn, but we only have one turn to really do something, and we actually are going to lose this. Wow. So that goes to prove that, like, I mean, sometimes just going for all the fire inscriptions are, is actually not that good. Um, I guess it's not technically over yet, but it's basically over here. Oh, we're not disguising you. Let's go ahead and play you down. Yeah, this, this game's um, effectively over. That's crazy. Yeah, we just um, need more of our actual, like, burn spells here. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and give him a good game. That is, uh, we'll clank it up, melt through. Yeah, that's actually crazy because it actually wasn't even close, despite our three inscriptions. So that's something to note. Devil Tongue. Hello, hello. We'll go ahead and keep this. Looks pretty good. Got the Ren's Resolve. The Ren's Resolve has actually been pretty good. I don't even know if I really like, if I like the Ren's Resolve to dig for more land or if I just need to run more land, but I'm running 24 right now and we'll go ahead and pass. Like I said, don't, definitely do not want to use my early burn spells if I don't have to. We definitely have to on this one. So, Swiss Spear comes out to play. Let's waste absolutely no time. Melt through the Swiss Spear here. Absolutely just going to get rid of that thing. That is a no-brainer. So, now we're kind of sitting here. You know, the Codebreaker is so good later in the game. I think we don't want to play nothing. I think in these terms, it does feel a little bit semi-awkward. But I think I do like using the, the Ren's Resolve on turn two, even if you don't get to play anything. I still think that it overall is worth it if you have this kind of hand here. So, yeah, this is actually pretty easy. Let's just go out, drop our forest down and get the fiery inscription down. I'm assuming they are probably running the same sort of thing here. And they questing druid. I actually am not running questing druid personally, but, I, you know, I think you can make a case for it. We do lose out one card from the runs resolve, but overall, 
I don't think it's that big of a deal. Hopefully they don't have their other... They don't. They no fire inscription for them on turn three, which means that we are, like, well ahead of them in terms of just, like, racing. There's another Perilous Iteration. Let's go and drop the uh, Captivating Crossroads. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to drop Jarsal, the Dark Age Scion. This card is absolutely bonkers in this deck. I think I'm only running one, but you might want to run two. I might actually want to kick this up. If I wasn't testing out the Concert Kaboomist. So with the, what we can do with the uh, Dark Age Scion here is we actually just get a one drop for free. I mean, it's pretty, it feels pretty broken here. So this feels like pretty much the best possible outcome. We do get the Melt Through with the Fiery Inscription. Even if they do have something to bump up the, the Druid here, which they could, you know, have some sort of instant and it does not. So we're good there. Even if they did, we have the Ranger's Firebrand. So... I think we're just gonna use it. Let's maintain efficiency here. We've got the code breaker and the iteration to kind of refuel our hand. So we pretty much have like unlimited burn here. And then next turn, if they don't get rid of Jar Soul, we're gonna have a Ren's Resolve for free because the intensity will be two. I mean, it feels borderline broken. Burn is really good in alchemy here. So lightning strike, that's not the end of the world. We've got two cards that can kind of refuel our hand. So I don't think it really matters that much. So, I think we'll go for the iteration first, just in case we do get a land from it. You can seek land from the iteration. So, I don't want to drop my land drop just yet. And no land there. That's okay. We've got our Concert Kaboomus. And we have until the end of next turn. So, I think what I want to do is probably go down for the Concert Kaboomus. It does have War 2, so I don't think they're really going to be able to... Well, not really. They don't have a Shelly's Edict or anything like that, so... Let's go ahead and count this. The Codebreaker is going to be looking pretty good. The Codebreaker can... We have two... We have... All three of our disguises in here now. We got the Concert Kaboomus, the Performer, and the Codebreaker. All three of our disguise creatures here. Unfortunately, they are going to be able to pay the ward cost on the Kaboomer. So we do lose you, unfortunately. But we still have two other cards here. And the Codebreaker is what's really going to give us a fresh new hand, essentially. Three cards with burn is essentially a new hand. Pass turn and another Performer. Oh my god. All right, so let's go ahead... I think this is the best move. I mean, we've got five mana here, so let's go ahead and put this face down. We want to make use of this, and then I'm just going to actually play the Performer. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll just play the Performer, even though we're not going to be able to do, um, you know, do whatever. They're not going to be able to deal with all of this. And then we still have the Code Breaker for later, and then we're going to turn you... Oh, this is going to get nasty. Yeah, this is going to get absolutely nasty. I don't think they have really any shot here, unless they have some sort of board wipe. Unless they are running a uh, Brotherhood's End, which I don't think they would be. Get rid of the Performer, which is not great, but it is what it is. Like, if I didn't have the Code Breaker here, I'd be a little bit more nervous. And a Firebrand, yeah, it's not optimal. I mean, we don't love that, but it's okay. Two cards in their hand, and we got the Code Breaker. And now the Code Breaker, I mean, we're, we're going to be breaking codes for to, to say the absolute minimum here. So another Fiery, okay. I think this is going to be worth it. It's a little slower, but we're not really in any danger. I'm going to drop the second Fiery Inscription. I'm not dropping this Code Breaker. We need to use the Code Breaker to gain all of that card advantage, which we're going to be able to basically draw three with it. Yeah, I'm not playing it so that they can uh, burn it down. No way. Ren's Resolve. Ren's Resolve is so good. Perilous Iteration. Okay, it's fine. Do they have a land drop yet? No. Fire Inscription. Okay, that's fine. We have two Fire Inscription and way more life, so I think we're looking good. And a shock. Look at this. We could not ask for a better top deck here. Let's go ahead and put our little Codebreaker face down. Let's go in for the shock. I'm gonna hit him with two Fire Inscriptions, and now we get to go this for absolutely free. Turn face up. We're down. We got all of the instants and sorceries in our hand, and we get to draw three, essentially. Draw this, and this is over. Oh, this game's over. Fire. Wow. Sometimes you don't even realize how much damage you can output in one turn. We didn't even need this. We have haste. And we didn't even need it. GG's. Nesh Tech. Hello, hello. Let's go ahead and keep this. Got double fire inscription. Looks pretty gosh darn good to me. Let's see what we got here. Nice little sleeves. A big fan of these sleeves. I don't need, um, were these like available in the store for a while? I don't know. I think so. Hello. We'll give you a hello. Give you a hello, Nesh Tech. How you doing? All right. So burn versus burn, I am supposing. Check. Do you want to melt through the chick? I don't know. I'm gonna say no. I'm actually gonna say no. We kind of, if we can help it, I would rather hold up our burn spells for the fire inscription to kind of get a little bit something extra out of them. I think that's pretty much the best move to do. Another chick, okay. Unless I go for like monstrous rage or something like that, I am probably gonna have to just let this go, which kind of sucks. But yeah, this is fine. Sure. 
perilous iteration. Let's go ahead and drop down our first fiery inscription, and yeah, this is fine. We are tapped out, so we are going to take a beating here. If um, they do have, you know, some crazy stuff, we're going to take a beating. But I think getting into the fiery inscription is just generally the best thing to do. Oh, so there. Okay, fire inscription versus fire inscription. They definitely have the better board. So they have two chicks and a fire inscription while we only have one. So I think the only play is to go in for fire inscription number two. And then we got a melt through. Sure. I guess we'll just hold off on the melt through. But this is looking a little a little tough. I mean, Perilous Iteration will give us a little bit of something else to play with. So yeah, as you can see, getting a little sweaty here. Down to 11. They have a fresh 20. They have a fresh 20. Um, I think we're going to have to melt through at least one of these chicks here. But just kind of depends. Shock. Yup. <laughs> yep, mm, down to seven, down to seven, and I think I am actually gonna go with the melt through now. The reason because, the reason being is they can, they have two on the ring, so draw a card, discard a card actually could really help them out here, especially if they're not very strong here. It's not looking great. Down to six is actually like, I think we're probably leaning on losing, especially if they just have two burn spells, they win. Performer is actually pretty good. Let's go for the iteration here. Get double fiery inscriptions because the performer is a little too slow for us right now. So bang bang. A lot of times, um, fiery inscription is actually not really like uh, preferable. So shock because like the, you can. This is the telltale. Um, uh, we just lost. I think. Yeah. So like I said, this is actually. The way the win rates work is, like, when you actually have multiple fiery inscriptions, it's actually not good. It's actually better just to have one most of the time. So that's interesting. I'm learning that. Bad at this game. All right, well, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. So let's see what we're going against. That was a quick land drop, so I don't think you're that bad in this game. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn here. I don't ever really want to play my stuff to get... I don't want to play my burn spells on just their face if I don't have to. There's a lot more upside later in the game if we can do that. So I guess we'll go ahead and drop the Construction Arsonist. It's a brand new alchemy card. It does make our stuff more powerful. I'm going to put it on the Shock rather than the Melt Through. But pretty much it just makes the Shock. Now it's going to deal for two. You're going to deal four damage. So it does become better than a Lightning Strike. So Lillian takes away the Arsonist. But that's okay. Our little Goblin friend already did his job. All right. So they are playing, they're playing very, very fast. So I'm going for Burns Resolve. Obviously, we do want a lot of land. Uh, a lot of red deck. Ooh, we do get a, ooh, get a forest. Uh, I am running one singular forest. Maybe that is a mistake. It does kind of, kind of burn us a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but I think in other matchups, that could be pretty bad. But we got a full hand here. Like I said, uh, um, four automaton. This thing, what does this thing do? That thing brings back stuff from your graveyard, but they don't have anything in their graveyard. So I don't think I'm really sweating that too much here. Um, you definitely need a lot of land for this deck. A lot of, like, um, aggro-y burn type decks. You know, we don't play, like, those type of decks. So I'm going to Runs Resolve, see if we can get some more land here, which we do, which is nice. Scrabby you. We are going to lose out on this Fiery Inscription, which kind of really sucks, honestly. But I think that's okay. Let's maintain mana efficiency. We could just go for a Shock. Don't think it really matters here. See, a lot of decks, they want like 18, or like not 18, but like 20, 21 lands or something like that. I, I think I have 24, and I'm actually thinking about going a little bit bigger here. We're going to miss out on the Fiery Inscription, which really sucks, but we don't play. We are more like a mid rangey burn, explosive -y type of deck here. So let's see if they want to get rid of this. That's not, that's not that big a deal. We do have the, uh, the Concert Kaboomist in our hand, so... Um, it's not the end of the world. There's another land, which is nice. I think I am going to be wanting to make use of the Shock. So we have it, but the Concert Kaboomus, our new alchemy card, really, really fun. Um, I think we just want to shock. Let's just get this out of the way. They don't have anything in their graveyard to kind of reanimate with this thing, but not dead after all. Okay, so this will just come back, essentially. I think we will spend the resources to melt through. Let's just get this thing out of here. I don't really want this thing to come back with a Wicked Roll count now. Nah, pass. Pass on that. All right. Now we actually have three left. I'm going to go in for a face down card. It's going to be our Concert Kaboomus. Shh, it's in disguise. They don't know. With the War 2. Uh, oh, I was about to say. Let's. Oh, that really sucks. Let's go ahead and give a sad face here. 
Dang, that really does suck. A Shelly? Can we deal with the Shelly? 20 life. Yeah, I mean, we should be okay here. Um, yeah, and that, that's Shelly's Edict. And then a Shelly to follow really, really kind of burns, but... Um, not burns as much as we can, so... If we shock, it's important to note that it just does their face. It doesn't really do anything else, so... I think what we're gonna do is go for the Perilous Iteration. Or do I wanna go for the Inscription first? I guess it depends on what... We're gonna get one from the Iteration, presumably. Maybe. Or a 3-drop of some sort, so... I think we're probably just better off going for the Inscription, I guess? And then I guess we Perilous Iteration here. Get the extra burn from the Inscription. Get the 2. And, yeah, it's actually not that bad. We just dropped that. I think we're, like, okay. We got another Fiery Inscription. So, I think at this point, we're just kind of racing. Uh, down to 11. They're going to gain life every turn. We're going to lose life every turn. Shelly does what Shelly does, you know. Alright, so let's draw. Lose life from Shelly, obviously. But we're going to get down this other Fiery Inscription. And it is, like, blinking, like, hollow border. Because we are going to have to get rid of it next turn. So, let's definitely get this down. All right, so nine life. Can we outrace them? Is the question. I think we can. Let's go for the shock, and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna keep the. Sh Wait. I just screwed up really bad there. Okay. Wow, that was actually really bad. Okay, so we shocked the Shelly. I, I, I thought I miscounted. I thought I had two more, and I was just gonna burn the Shelly to death. But now we kind of made our bed here. So we miss out. On, that was so bad. We miss out on two damage on the Shelly. Um. Yeah, definitely miscounted my lands. I thought I had another one. I was going to firebrand the Shelly just to kind of get rid of it. So we just deal two damage to the Shelly out of nowhere. But okay, um, let's see if we can get bailed out of the mistake here. I mean, we still have to do that. So they should have really eight life if I wasn't a dummy. Okay, that's still not over. Virtual Persistence, they gain 12 life. Okay, okay, it's Jarsal. Okay, the Dark Age Scion, that's actually really good. Okay, I think we're actually looking good. I think we might have just one off of that top deck, so it looks like we're going to get bailed out. What's really nice about this, uh, yeah, I think we won. So we're going to get the shock, and this shock perpetually gains deals two damage. So for just one, we're going to be able... This is great. This is phenomenal. I think we're, we're going to win. Down to six, down to four. Rangers fire ban, double fire inscription. We get absolutely bailed out. It turns out you don't have to be good at the game. You just have to be lucky. Decisa, Decisa, how you doing here? If I got that wrong, I apologize, but looking pretty good here. The Construction Arsonist, man. Really, really nice card. Um, man, I don't know. I think, I think uh, Burn was already pretty good, and I think Burn actually just got better. So, hopefully we can prove it. This, I don't know. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. We're playing. And, um, yeah, go ahead. Like I said, never, in my opinion, so far how, how I've piloted this deck, so far you never want to burn their face on turn one. Doesn't really make any sense. It's a lot of different things that we can do on turn uh, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. So, Underground Mortuary. Surveil one. Okay. See if we're going against Galgari or something else, but like, okay. Ooh, we get our Concert Kaboomus. That'll come in handy, but for now, let's go ahead and drop our new alchemy card, Construction Arsonist, and we're gonna make our Shock pretty much a, like, better Lightning Strike. So for two, we deal four instead of two. Pretty nice. Thought String Anus. Okay, this is actually, real. this is like a Dark Confidant. Yeah, this card's the new card. Um, Gotta be a little careful here. I think I'm gonna waste absolutely no time. Let's actually just drop the Pyrotechnic Performer, and I'm just gonna melt through on this Analyst real quick. Just, just let's just get rid of it. I don't even want them to kind of get anything, any sort of like burn spells, because if they just get some of our burn spells or whatever, um, it's not good. We got two toughest creatures here. Relics of the Rubble Belt, a big fan of alliteration on the channel here. So they pretty much just get one of these little uh, mana rocky things here, but it does come in tapped, which is nice. So, we gotta be a little speed like, but fortunately, we are pretty fast here. Perilous Iteration, we do get the Arsonist to go up to a 4 4, which is very, very nice. We don't run a whole lot of multicolored spells here, but the Arsonist, this is uh, what we do here. So, shock him down, baby. We're gonna deal 4 for 2 damage, and we get him down to 7, so looking pretty good. Next turn, we go for our Fiery Inscription. We do have the Kaboomist, but the Kaboomist might be a little slow, because I know this deck probably, I'm assuming, has. Rusko. Okay. I think they are tapped out, essentially. I know the Midnight Clock can give them um, blue, but I think I don't think they really have anything for one blue source that they can play, so. Let's go for the Fiery Inscription. Put it on the Arsonist so that the Arsonist can swing in and not get blocked by the Rusko. And I think we're going to actually Ranger's Firebrand the face. I think this is like, looking pretty easy. Down to three they go, and we'll keep, the, we'll keep it on the Arsonist. And we're going to swing in here, and they're going to actually have to use Rusko to block. 
Tectonic Hazard. This is one of those cards I'm not really super sold on. I do, I do like it, but um, I think we'll get rid of it now. I can just deal one to their face, but they're gonna have to block with the Rusko. So we're gonna, well, actually, they're gonna take him down to one life. Maybe we should have kept it. It just feels weird not keeping. I don't know. It is what it is. Maybe we should have got rid of the Kaboomus, but either way, they're gonna have to tr or trade with the Rusko. So the Rusko's gonna go bye bye, and then they're gonna go down to one. It feels pretty good with the fiery inscription out. Unless they have a way to gain life. Pretty much gonna be over, I think. So, yeah, looking good. Trade down to one. Don't think there's much else to really read into this. Um, we could go for the Performer and the... Kab I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think either one of them is lethal. So, unless they gain life. Assemble the team. They can assemble whatever you'd like. They are going to have to find an answer. And have they found an answer is the question. So, two, three, four, and another. That's not going to do it. So, that's fine. And at house, you got the Lighted Halfling... I think they have access to three more mana sources here, right? Lonely and Ooh, they actually do gain life, but that is not going to matter. Definitely not going to matter now. Now we just have a shock. Um, yeah, so now it's just over. Shock with the inscription is just going to take it. But uh, yeah, good game. I mean, yeah. All right. So double fire inscription, a tectonic hazard. I think we'll keep this. This looks pretty good. Um... Like I said, though, uh, getting double fiery inscription in your hand sometimes is not always the best. Well, hold on. What is this? I've never seen these sleeves in my life. Where'd you get these from? All right. All right. Never seen this before. I always get jealous whenever I see... Oh, three fiery inscriptions? I don't even know if that's good or bad. I guess we'll find out. Let's go in for our pyrotechnic performer. Like I said, a lot of times you'll see in, in the mirror match, in the mirror match... Having multiple fire inscriptions is actually bad because you typically just want to have one and then just like beat them to the punch. So, but this is not a mirror match. This is, I think in this case, we actually do like the fire inscriptions. So, see if they tap out here. That'll make our decision a little easier. And now yeah, let's go ahead and swing in. Maybe they just go for a removal spell. We're looking good. Being tempted one time doesn't do anything. So, doing this before combat, not really a big deal. They have a um, counter, is what it is. We still got a few more. So that's fine. That's actually fine. So in this case, we do like having the fiery inscriptions. Still don't know where they got these sleeves, though. I've never seen these. Like, I don't even... A little jealous. A little jealous. Oh, I'm not jealous of that missed land drop. Definitely not jealous of that. So, um, is there any... Is there, like, a sensor type of card in alchemy? I actually don't know. So I think we'll just be uber duber super mega safe and we'll go for the fire inscription now. But I actually do. It actually does matter now if you were to in um if you were to get two instances of tempting the ring. Cut down, which is fine. I guess that's better than a counter spell. So do you want to go for the tectonic hazard? I don't think so. I think because we have this other fire inscription, we might as well wait and we get extra burn out of it. What the? Oh, okay. I was about to say, in these colors, in Demir colors, I don't see how they could actually get rid of the fire inscription, but they just bounce it. So, bouncing it's no problem. We can deal with that all day. So, I think we are going to go in for the inscription, and I, I think we're not going to play anything else. Like I said, before we start burning their face or doing anything else, I think we just want to make sure that we get this inscription down, especially with their land drops being so, well, I don't want to say awkward. It's just bad. It's not even awkward. It's just straight up missing them. See if they want to do it again. We can we can handle this all day though. Impulse. They're impulsing at sorcery speed. That's how you know they are down bad. Impulse at sorcery speed. Yeah, ooh, that's a little gross here. But let's go in for our fiery inscription. Rage's fire. I'm just gonna start doing it now. I think we've got plenty of it, and they know. GG's.